Patrick Wood has studied globalization policies since the late 1970s when he co-authored Trilaterals Over Washington with the late Anthony C. Sutton. He speaks to us today from Mesa, Arizona. Patrick, it's nice to have you with us. Thank you for having me on, Steve. First of all, what is technocracy? It proposes that the scientists and engineers would simply run society as an autocratic mechanism on their own without input from anyone other than themselves. So I guess two good examples of technocracy would be the fictional societies in the books Brave New World and 1984. Actually, they would. Both of those books were written looking straight into the face of technocracy, that is, the historical movement from the 1930s. It was just cresting in 1933-1934 when Brave New World was written by Aldous Huxley. Let's see. Brave New World came out in 1932, and 1984 was published in 1949. Yet it is hard to find much mention of technocracy in historical documents of that era. As your book points out, we can blame newspaper tycoon William Randolph Hearst for that. That's correct. His newspaper and his writers, journalists, and so on were used by technocracy to float stories that made technocracy look very good, but many things that they said were not true. So Randolph Hearst, learning that the co-founder of Technocracy, Inc. didn't even have an engineering degree and was subsequently booted from Columbia University, issued a memo stating that no more articles could be written with the word technocracy in it. So technocracy disappeared from public view, like a submarine, only to reemerge in 1973. That's when the Trilateral Commission was founded. Patrick, who would be a good example of a modern-day technocrat? Mr. John Podesta, who is currently the senior advisor to President Obama for climate change. Mr. Podesta is a member of the Trilateral Commission, and he is a technocrat in the strictest sense. Having participated in a very high-level panel of experts at the United Nations on climate change, and he subsequently crafted the entire climate change policy that is now being offered by President Obama. He has no congressional mandate at all to do what he's doing. He's just an appointed official, but he's having a tremendous influence on our government. Patrick, let's switch topics a little bit. Why do you believe the massive surveillance and data collection that we all face, I call it the erosion of our Fourth Amendment rights, is another symptom of technocracy? We see these intrusive data collection mechanisms all over the country, whether it be Obamacare, whether it be Common Core Education Standards, uh, whether it be the NSA and the intelligence community spying on everything that they can get their hands on. All of these things are an expression of technocracy to gather data in order to manage the engineered society. Another disturbing trend you mentioned is the infiltration of religious organizations. What's going on with that? Even the Pope said that by June of this year, the Catholic Church will be issuing what is called an encyclical that will address climate change. We see all of the larger ecumenical organizations, the National Council of Churches, the World Council of Churches, and other groupings on every website. Even some evangelical groups. That's right. We see this language, the language of climate change, the language of ecology, the language of sustainable development has completely permeated these uh, religious organizations. Patrick, technocracy, global transformation, whatever you want to call it, is so pervasive. Where is this movement most vulnerable? There's a lot that people can do in their own community to root this thinking out. The individuals on a local level, you can find out who they are. You can face them uh, directly. Tell them that rule by experts is just flat out antithetical to the American way of life, and they're just not going to put up with it anymore. Patrick, you've left us with a lot to think about. Thanks for being with us today. You're entirely welcome. Everybody, you can keep up with Patrick Wood by visiting his website, augustforecast.com. Also, he's currently making appearances to promote the findings in his book, Technocracy Rising, The Trojan Horse of Global Transformation. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. you hear this.com.